my voice. What you mean in the last recording or this one? No, no. Well, just when we started, it, it seems OK now. I thought the, the. No, no, that's fine. Brilliant. Um, Roger, you've been writing some sub stacks um, about your previous wiki ballot work, um, uh -huh. possibly in relation to some of these by elections and uh, constituency solidarity in relation to outcomes. What yeah. have you been writing about? Well, just to go back to the beginning, in and around the time of Brexit and Brino, so we're talking 2017 or so, John Law, uh, jo John Ward on the slog, uh, he wrote a post um, about what he called personal destiny control. Um, and, uh, a, a, you know, a group of people that felt that um, the Brexit vote was being gamed, the clock played down, I mean, it dragged on. We all know how it dragged on and we were all quite sort of fed up about how it dragged on. Um, so I'm not meaning to open up any old wounds in that, but out of that discussion, um, I said the way to organise tactical voting um, is to actually have a wiki which forms a base where all where people can adopt a constituency and run a kind of a public primary to screen the candidates who are being put up for election um, so that local communities can satisfy that whoever they elect is going to represent their interests when they go to Westminster or Stormont or uh, Edinburgh or, you know, uh, or, or the Senate in Cardiff and stuff. Um, the idea being that uh, the two party system is voting for the evil of two lessers. Right, just you know, chuck a few cliches in here. Um, and it's not a party political thing, what it is, it, it's a community interests thing. And so, it, if, if of all the parties someone isn't running or there isn't an independent worth running, um, then people could get together and put up their own independent. Thing, but the idea of the primaries is to say, well, if there's someone, well, that's we'll we'll all vote for them anyway, um, but not do it along party political lines, do it along community interest lines. And my theory is, if a if a hung parliament can be delivered along those lines, at least you've got a hung parliament of MPs that could then form a government in the interests of of the country. But with individual in, um, uh, individual MPs representing uh, local interests. So, at the time, I wrote a, a thing about the electoral thermostat being disconnected from from the boiler. You know, you twiddle the knob, and it's not actually connected to anything. And I certainly feel that that's kind of where the voting process went. So, so. I put up this wiki on a, a wiki site called Merhalese or whatever, um, and imported all of the constituencies in England and Wales, um, put, uh, and then started populating some of those constituencies with interesting stuff. There were two by-elections at the time, Newport West uh, and, um, oh, there were at the same time as Newport West, there were two by-elections quite close together, which became a kind kind of a vote about how the Brexit thing was going. You remember Newport West is where um, oh the oh, what's he called the guy that he ran for UKIP, his next Tory Christie. What was she? What were they called? Um, I forget his name now. Uh, you, you know they 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 he was forced to resign for whatever it was, there were so many have been forced to resign, but um, Hamilton, that's it, Christine Hamilton. And anyway, he ran in Nor in Newport West. It was kind of, kind of interesting. And I, on that, actually used uh, an online voting piece of software called Polis, P-O-L-Y-S, uh, which allows you to, to basically do primaries. Um, 
and they're not gameable. It's quite secure and all the rest of it. And uh, so the functionality exists for in local constituencies for people to run primaries like they do in the States. But the primaries aren't that they're from the people, not imposed on the people by the binary political party thing, the two party you know, thing. So that's that. Now, and then if, if you remember Hartlepool, on the Hartlepool by-election, you and I were interested in that one. Um, and I, I, I have got Hartlepool on there and I, I, I basically uh, supported the independent candidate, Sam, uh, in, in, in that Hartlepool by-election. And she did reasonably well. Um, but it's fair to say the Tiki Wiki, the, the Wiki rather, didn't take off. It, 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 it's got 1,300 registered um people, none of whom have made any edits. I, I, I've done every single ed edit. I, now, over a period of time, there's quite a lot of information on there now, and I've, I, I've lightly maintained it. Um, but if there's going to be a general election coming up, whether it's a snap election or whether it's next February, if it's next February, there's a year for people that actually want to do something and engage with the political process. This is a way to engage with the political process in your own terms, on your own terms, as a community. So it it's um it's a way to do something. Um, and, and 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 because the wiki itself has got all um, the way wikis work, anyone can. Uh, uh, edit anyone can um they can do it anonymously as well you, you you know you don't have to give a bunch of details i think you have you have to give you have to give some details if you want to do certain things but you, you can register anonymously and you can look at it and all that sort of thing but the idea is that individual constituencies can be adopted um and people will do their own thing. And it's totally independent of all the other constituencies. But because they're all in that one place, people can share ideas and see, oh, they're doing this. You know, the idea is it can kind of go viral. That That's the idea. Uh, and wikis, I mean, WikiLeaks is WikiLeaks for a reason. Wikis are very good way of ordering information. Um, to the extent that our, in a commercial, my commercial business, we, we, we made a thing, there's a thing called TikiWiki, which combines a wiki with a customer relations management arm. Um, uh, all of the sort of commercial type software that uh, commercial businesses use to communicate with their customers and, and, and their, their suppliers and all that sort of thing. Within TikiWiki, um, the thought was that this wiki as it exists could be ported into a ticky wiki with added functionality. So that's the one bit, a wiki. Great. Now, the thing about people finding stuff on the Internet is that the Google fil filters dominate the information flow on on the Internet. We, we, we had a discussion about the other, that the other day. And um, there's a thing called the interplanetary file system which doesn't it doesn't play the Google game in quite the same way. Now, um, I I think the Internet is hopeless for communication now, you know, for, for free communication. It's not it, free in terms of freedom or the liberty to discuss things with like minded people is severely limited on the Internet now. The, the filters make sure of that. I call it the Panopticon jailer bot for that reason. So the the idea of the interplanetary file system, bit torrents, thumb drives, etc., um, and uh, Linux distributions. So these are uh, computer operating systems which are free. You you, you can actually um, the operating system itself is is free open source um or you know that there are different degrees of freedom you need to look at richard stallman's work to sort of go into what those are um so like he says free free as in terms of liberty not free in terms of as, as in free beer 
it, you know, that's one of the things Richard Stallman says. But 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 just just on that point, um, when communication is heavily censored, filtered, marshaled, governed, you know, controlled, whatever. Um, historically, people have used things like Samizdat literature, pamphleteering and, 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 and stuff like that. Uh, the other thing, um, you know, you've got um, the Bible, you know, the English Bible, the guy that translated into, in, in, into English, I forget his name, but you know the guy I'm talking about, he, he, he got into a Is lot of trouble. Thomas Middleton? Is that his name? Thomas I can't. I, I can't remember. It's called the something Bible. It might have been Tom, but as I say, I, I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. But like, this is a similar thing in terms of um, excluding people from quality information uh, that doesn't accord with the uh, the wishes of the Panopticon jailer bot. Just just to put that phrase on it. So. Um, on the front page of the Tiki Wiki, one of the videos that's embedded there is about, you know, it, 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 is there any point in voting? Do, 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 you know, can you make a difference? You know, and, and it's this one guy saying, well, yes, you can. Well, I'm, I'm saying the same thing. Uh, um, back in the day, there was a video about they don't want you to vote, you know, like low turnouts in certain circumstances will benefit the sitting party, that sort of thing. So this is all sort of election tactics or whatever, um, that the party political system with their organisers, activists, ground game, they call it, right? There's, there's lots of information on the internet about how they go about it. The idea of uh, wiki tactical voting, wiki ballot, was to give that uh, tactics book to communities so that they can organise a ground game to deliver a representative MP rather than an imposed MP, right? Because, uh, you know, I, I, I personally don't see much of a qualitative difference between um, Keir Starmer, um, Rishi Sunak or any of you know any of the others I mean I, I we started all of this stuff back when Jeremy back in 2015 when Jeremy Corbyn sort of hit the scene uh, and then 2017 and then 2019 they kind of diluted Corbyn the Corbyn that ran in 2019 was like Corbyn light now um from a democratic point of view okay um if you don't like jeremy corbyn or you don't like uh andrew bridgen so say say you're a labor party sport doesn't like jeremy I'm, I'm trying to think of two pariahs or painted as such so andrew bridgen is you know he's been booted out of the tories and Jeremy Corbyn has been booted out of Labour. But can, but I tell you one, can I tell you one bad thing about Andrew Bridgen? And obviously we'll just go back. One mm. really bad thing about Andrew Bridgen is, and I know you might not like me saying this, but he is, after all, a Tory. Uh, well, I don't... <sighs> For me, that is a small indication of where you're coming from. If you've been living on the same planet as me, but there you go. I know that yeah, it's that, all, it's about policy. That, 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 that tribal stuff actually can can and does work against your own interests in certain in certain constituencies. So, for instance, I, I've spent a lifetime living in constituencies where a Labour Party candidate is never going to get in. Right? What do you do? Well. You might not necessarily want the Conservative candidate that the, the Conservative Party is putting up. You might want an, a, 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 an independent that has similar views to yourself, but isn't beholden to the party system. So what I'm saying is the party system, it works in it works in um, in the interests of the establishment and the establishment 
whilst it's a subset of, of all of us anyway, it doesn't have community interests at the front of its uh, and that's so clear at the moment, whether it's can I, can, I, can I just can I just clarify here in some ways, the point of this conversation is to say there is a wider system which exists, which is doing fine for itself. Thank you very much. However, due to some work that you put in a few years ago and some evolution in something to do with technology now is a good time, especially given that all these by-elections and elections coming up, for communities to have a chance at holding their own hustings, at going to the uh, candidates. By the way, do you remember Michael Crick? Do I remember Michael Crick? He used to be a Channel 4 news presenter. Right. Uh, He did the politics. This is Crick with the glasses. Uh He did Newsnight as well. Um, he's now no longer with either of them, but he did set up a Twitter account, which is doing quite well for itself. And it's called Tomorrow's MPs. Uh-huh. I have interviewed him about it. I think we put the, it out. Um, if I didn't no, I think I maybe I put it out on TikTok and no one noticed. I think it's time for me to revive that one as well in the same spirit. What he's done is he's put up um, this Twitter account and it basically as soon as and a candidate is decided Uh Uh, it says this is who the candidate is i think it even does it with uh candidates who are rumored to be uh the candidate you know like potential candidates and i asked him a year and a half ago because we saw him at liverpool for the party conference and i asked him then um have you had any scalps so far and he was going to be doing it with the university of manchester he wanted to get an institution because this is political science in a way you know it's Uh it's information it's data all of this stuff um he said he was trying to get a partnership with manchester university i wouldn't be surprised if he's managed to secure that now but um because obviously they needed funding and everything but um when i asked him have you had any scalps so far he said not that i know of and i really quite loudly just laughed in his face Uh and said and to say is obviously not true is obviously not true because and this speaks to what you're doing i think i mean i I need to check but i'm quite sure that even then people who were putting themselves up uh got into trouble just on that i'm actually not doing anything I, i mean i have i've spent a lot of time putting that wiki and giving it a shape but it's it's not about me doing something or even particularly wanting to do anything. Um, The simple point is that people need to organise at a local level if they want to do anything, right? And to do that without interference, okay, um, manipulation, you know, all the rest of it, people have to organise and have um almost like a a handbook of of, of useful tips to organize without being interfered with um now the and a wiki is a good way of of arranging information on that way and it's also um from a in, in terms of getting past the google filters so that you can be talking to a larger number of people um my suggestion of using a dongle which can be encrypted people can um order a preloaded dongle and basically the wiki a node for ipfs all that stuff will just load onto their computer right you um you, you put it in click a few things and there it is right then you take it out when you start your computer next time it's your your usual computer it's kind of like two computers for the price of one um but the computer you use with the dongle um only exists when it's on the internet and the inf- you, you can change information and that goes to all of the different people that are on this, this is what distributed networks are um and for older 
people that remember BitTorrents, uh, you know, that's basically how, how IPFS kind of works as a BitTorrent. Um, you know, you, if you go on like the Wayback Machine, the Wayback Machine archive, you can actually download um, the information on there in different formats, one of which is BitTorrents. Uh, and BitTorrents come from a distributed network of mode, uh, of nodes. Uh, so, I mean, that, that's cork sniffy computer stuff. But at the, uh, so at the functional end of, of, of our daily politics, which is affecting our lives awfully, you know, the NHS is on its knees, um, that you, more or less everywhere you turn, businesses are going out of uh, business. Um, you know, BlackRock continues to get bigger and bigger and more influential on all of our, you know, um, uh, it, it, there's something deeply un, uh, unattractive and undemocratic about Larry Fink, who's the CEO of, or whatever he is, of BlackRock, having much more influence in our daily da daily lives and the people we think we're voting to actually look after our interests have. And you don't get a vote when it comes to Larry Fink. So, you know, I, I happen to think that 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 isn't working for actually delivering, um, you know, uh, a happier world and a more prosperous world. It just simply isn't. So. Um, so what can you do? You can complain about it. Lots of people do that. There are plenty of opportunities to complain, sing to the choir, bark at the moon, whatever it is on, on the Internet. <laughs> twi Twitter always your heart's content, you know, all of that <laughs> stuff. Right. Is it, it might make you feel better. But, you know, um, I, I've got to find it. But back in the days of Occupy, there was a guy called Indian Indiana. He, he looked from Cardiff, actually, funny enough. And David posted on his blog on the Gollum blog, uh, this a YouTube video and, and Indian Indiana. He did this song called What You're Gonna Do, What You're Gonna Gonna Do. And it's really good. It's about Occupy and it's one of the Occupy marches. And he's dressed up as a um, like a Native American Indian. And he, he's he's an Indian, um, you know, he's, he's, his, his heritage is, is from the Indian subcontinent. And uh, I just, so I think that's his little pun, you know, Indian, Indiana, um, but it's a brilliant song. What you gonna do, what you gonna gonna do, what you gonna do is a da 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 ba 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 da da. I, 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 I can't remember the lyrics, but it's brilliant. And, and I will find it. I, I referred to it in a post I did the other day. But I need to look for it and find it because it's uh, it, it's it's ever it, it's very 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 funny. There are lots of zombies, you know. It's at the time when people talk about zombie banks and all of that good Occupy stuff. And so effectively, um, what we're talking about is uh, occupying local democracy, occupying democracy. So the Occupy move, movement started off with Occupy Wall Street, right? Um, and you know, we are under occupation, right? Um, our politics is under occupation and it's occupied by corporate interests. It's as simple as that. Now, I, I haven't got any beef with, I'm a businessman. I haven't got a, a beef with businesses doing business. That's the, you know, I haven't got a beef with bankers doing banking, but I don't want, um, I don't want them uh, or the very big ones um, running my life for me. And I don't want to see them actually destroying the social value in, in, in our local place. So I don't, you know, destroying, de destroying the NHS to enrich US medical insurance companies is not my idea of a good deal. So, um, so doing something about it. complaining is great. But eventually you have to think, right, OK, well, that's what I'm complaining about. What do I do about it? And this is the step is taking the agency to do something about it now. Um, and having, you know, a focal point and a way of publicising that focal point, wiki ballot and the distribution method, which, which is completely aut aut um, aut autonomous. Um, uh, the 
thumbnail distributions already exist that when, when when we got on this call i was just actually having a look to see if there is an ipfs um, already on a loaded thumbnail um there are lots of linux distros which are um and i put them in in the blog actually if i just get my screen share up look and, and let's just uh just look at that um generic pmp uh, I want that one there. Start sharing. Okie dokie. Uh, can you see? There we are. So, so this is the one here. Um, are you still there, Engine? My my. I am indeed. All right. So. Okay. So this is the grub street exile okay and uh, it's titled the pulling up of the affordable housing ladder so affordable housing you know the high housing crisis is obviously one of the big things at the moment so it's housing nhs cost of living um they're going to be the big things at the next general election and they're all in a parlous state right whether employment unemployment goes up and you know it, it's things aren't great at the moment and and uh uh it's at best you could say it's due to incompetence at worst it's due to willful neglect right well right if we're all on that page let's do something about it so this is an old puck um cartoon i think it's from the late 1800s or late 19th century and these are the robber barons, right, uh, in the United States. So that's a map of the United States. Then there's a seal proposal to perch for the purchase of Europe. So this is this cartoon is saying the robber barons are now trying to purchase Europe, you know, um, and they've achieved that in the last 30 years. And the, 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 the caption is let them have it all and be done with it, right, i.e., let's surrender to the robber barons right which obviously they didn't do um it took until about the nine in the 1930s and then the 1950s um i'm not sure when they were in in, in america something called the sherman act uh, and the sherman act is about it's an antitrust uh legislation to break up monopolies uh, so Standard Oil, when that was broken up, that was part of it. Uh, RCA was broken up or, you know, the big telephone companies. Right. So they they realized, look, this isn't working. It's doing more harm than good. We've got to sort it out. Right. Um, James Corbett does a very good section on Standard Oil being broken up in his um, his film, How, the, How Big Oil Conquered the World. Very much worth, you know, looking at. So. Anyway, so this is that that's the sort of setup that that cartoon. And so um, and then the next thing is this this video, um, which is uh, Tony Benn. Now, I, I, this is one of my favorite 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 clips. OK, um, at the beginning, this this was several years later. Not sure if the sound will come out. So this is Robin Day and Tony Benn and Roy. Orange boy, there's Michael Hesselstein. I can't hear. Some subtitles on it now. Look. I mean, I'll be blunt with you, Roy. You talk about cancer. I feel very strongly about people whose entire life depends on the working class movement. Your father was a miner. He was in jail in the general strike. You got into parliament. Carry on. I've lost the audio. Oh, I, I put the microphone by the speaker. It, it, I had it, but then I lost it. You talked about Roy Jenkins's dad. Yeah, so the clip goes on and then Tony Benn says people that pull up, get into power and pull up the ladder after them. And that's um, 
a statement which I used, uh, uh, pulling up the affordable housing ladder. Um, and so this is a, a video I did about how house prices, home ownership and um, how that's all developed. Uh, so th that's quite a long analysis that I did on that. Um, then this is an, an early 2020 video that I did about what I call the reluctant 10%, which people who want to own a home but rent a home, you know. I, but anyway, so and then there's some links to a couple of other blogs. Um, and then as you get to the bottom, OK, this barcode of evolution, OK, uh, what I'm saying here is the evolution from here that that barcode, it could be a QR code or whatever, that that's the Panopticon jailer bot in the logo for Grub Street in exile. You've got this uh, pencil gun. It's a silhouette of a gun, a pencil. It's saying the pen is mightier than the gun. Ah. Um, that's on the Penguin, the Penguin Modern Edition of Pedagogy of the Press by Paolo Freire. Oh, really? That, 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 that's the cover photo. So I've just, I wrote in Grub Street in Exile. I didn't try to make it pretty. I wanted to look kind of graffiti-esque. And then this is a silhouette of, of, of a thumb drive. Well, the thumb drive is the Internet's equivalent of a, of a pencil and paper. OK, it, it exists outside of the filters of Google when you go onto the internet and you're in a Google or Chrome browser. That's that. So that that's that's the symbology or whatever. That's the semiotics of, 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 of that logo. Um, then this is this this is an evolution pun. So this is Gil Scott Heron's The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. Um, when Bernie Sanders was running in primaries, and this is Melinda Ab Abdullah, who, who, who is from Black Lives Matter. Um, and she's a brilliant professor. Uh, and this was her appearing, I think it was on the Young Turk show or whatever. Um, um, but what, what she says in this is, look, the revolution won't be televised. She said it several times, and so I cut it into the track. Uh, but what she's talking about is, Look, you've got a two party system. Um, vote for your own interests. If you think someone's going to do that, we don't think that's going to actually do because it, it, the, the American system, it has primaries and all of this sort of thing. And they had them at the start so that they did have say in who gets to run to be president or who runs to go in the Senate or whatever to represent their interests, the Senate, the Congress, whatever. Uh, well, what she says about look these two parties they they they're not going to do anything in your interest we know that so you know we're not saying don't vote we're just saying don't get your expectations up because if you just go with the system as it is like george carlin said if if voting did anything they wouldn't let you do it right what i'm saying is well if you if if you organize primaries you can actually make your vote count in terms of returning um accountable representatives simple as that so then the next one then is the same track with Lytton Crosby saying the same thing the revolution will not be terrorized and I've again you know um, and these are uh, about three or four years apart um, anyway then the next one is this the Mandarin revolution age of uncertainty so this is made by Adrian Malone Adrian Malone produced this, David's father, right? The whole series is on my YouTube channel, but this is episode seven, uh, which is directly relevant to the current time. And then when there was going to be a hung part, well, the, do you remember the supply vote when DUP held up and put Mrs May in as prime minister and because uh, it had been a hung parliament? Yeah, and they, they had a supply vote arrangement with the DUP, which allowed them to form a government. Yeah. Well, at that time, what I was saying is, um, look, we need a hung parliament and the response to the hung parliament should be a grand coalition to get Brexit through or whatever. What I'm saying now is um, I'm not talking about an emergency grand coalition because we need a war. The last thing we need is a war. Um, but what we do need is a House of Commons that represents our interests. And the, um, the the government that was formed in 1940 was 
a coalition, grand coalition. Uh, Churchill ran the war, Attlee ran the country. And then, of course, Attlee returned um, a lab the Labour landslide of 1945, whatever. And then things like the 1947 Education Act, the National Health Act, the, um, the nationalisation of the Bank of England. There was a lot of stuff was achieved, right? Um, by both, but by both conservative parties and Labour parties in that post-war war period, between 1945 and 1973, okay, things got immeasurably better for many, many more people across the whole of the UK, right? So can I tell you one thing you're forgetting, mm -hmm. um, which is one big difference between today and before, is now. I know this might sound a bit paranoid, but um, now in terms of lobbying um, and who's managed to get really, really, really good at lobbying, obviously you were talking about Larry Fink before and people like that. Um, I think some of the lobbies have got quite strong, to put it mildly. I mean, it's not like they weren't there before. But. Yeah, well, quite, but the, the lobbies tend to be for corporate interests and disguise corporate interest through the foundation system. Now, all, all, all of that is talked about at, at length, right? What I'm saying is, yeah, go and read Sutton, go and read Quigley, go and read um, uh, Edward G. Griffin, go, go and read all of that stuff. But look, do something about it, do something practical. And the way to do it is to organise primaries yourselves within the constituencies and to support someone that will represent your interests. Now, whether they get in or not, one would hope that sufficient people could be um, enthused by, by this idea to, to run with it. Right. right OK, I'm going to interrupt you again, Roger, I'm afraid. May I? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that three weeks ago, I would think, possibly four, three or four weeks ago, an announcement was made because you know where you live? Who's your MP? I've no idea, Ranjan. I, I, you know, I, I, I spend half my time or as much time as I can in Sweden. And I, in Wales, I, I haven't got a clue who the local... Yeah, that, I, I, one meant, of the I things, meant in Wales. I meant just, in Wales. Just on that point, one of the things I've been planning to do is to look to adopt the, the local um, constituency here to see if I can get a primary type thing going uh, in Poniclean, Rhonda, Sinantaf, um, oh, Landris, and this maybe, area. Yeah. Are you in Rhonda? Um, our local authority is Rondersen and Taff, yeah. So maybe it's Chris Bryant. Uh, He's well, Rhonda. I think there are several constituencies and I'm not sure. It could possibly be. Um, okay. But I, I, like I said, I don't know. That's on my list of things. To okay. actually the thing do. I wanted to say was about three or four weeks ago in the constituency that I live in, it was announced that the MP will not be running at the next election. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that's quite interesting is that she was one of the MPs who had to leave the, I'm going to say shadow government, I mean, the shadow mm -hmm. cabinet, but you know, she might not have been in the shadow cabinet, but anyway, she was the shadow minister mm -hmm. uh, for welfare, I think, and housing. Anyway, she left because she wanted to vote for a ceasefire in October. Um, it turns out also, I think her husband's ill and she's been MP for a while, so she's standing down. And they're picking a new one. Uh huh. So um, last weekend also, I think on Sunday morning, a leaflet came through my letterbox and the local councillor for my ward, who's also in charge of planning. This is for Westminster Council. Or, you know, he's the uh -huh. he's the council in charge of planning. Um, he put a leaflet through saying still the lowest council tax in the country, etc. Which is kind of interesting because it was Tory and it's become Labour. Uh -huh. um, but I think maybe 
using wiki ballot and tomorrow's MPs, I could um, keep an eye on who's coming next. Yeah, well, or, or, or try and get a primary going. I mean, I, they say never trust trust a chef that won't eat their own cooking, right? Well, clearly, wiki ballot is my own cooking, and I, I, you know, we. With the Hartlepool by-election, we kind of had a little look at it um, and, and, and uh, you know, you interviewed Sam and stuff like that, didn't you? Um, yeah. Now, what, um, so David has actually run to be the MP in Scarborough, for instance. Um, yeah. Right. So I, I, I tried to encourage David to adopt Scarborough or whatever. I, I'm going to give David a call over the weekend because I, I sent that email to you John Ward and David you know obviously I wrote it so the four pamphleteers um, you know all of that stuff because I made a website for Wikiballot as well as the wiki itself which you know it, it's up I mean it, you know it works there's a good RSS feed in it in fact um, the slogs RSS feed is still going into it I mean I um, so like I say I I, I I went back into business um, during 2019. So halfway through 2019, I, 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 um, I, I changed my workflow from um, web type stuff and Grub Street Journal type stuff and morphed into, um, you know, going back to being a businessman again. Um, and uh, what I've found in the last four years is that um, where there's a will, because I can assure you I've certainly got the will, there hasn't been a way, right? You know, they all say that where there's a will, there's a way. Well, I, I, I can testify to my own will and I've got, you know, I have got good will power. I don't give up easily. And with four or five years of working very, very hard, I have not found a way to deliver affordable homes. Oh, I, 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 I know how to do it and I'm perfectly capable of doing it, but there isn't a way um, or hasn't been a way to do it, even with all the talk of the government saying, oh, we want to do this, we want to do that. And the, I mean, the last straw for me was when Michael Gove sent 1.9 billion back to the Treasury from the levelling up department, which was earmarked for affordable housing. Now, they haven't come close to uh, to addressing that problem. So he sends this money back and now they've got a new initiative. Oh, we're going to do building on brownfield land and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Well, I don't doubt that they'll still be talking about it in 30 years time, but they're not doing anything. Um, and so but I I'm not just still complaining. I'm still trying to do something. I, I haven't given up and I haven't given up on the idea of, well, actually, in terms of this, how do you return uh, political people to the corridors of power that actually take into account the views of local people um, and, and local needs, wants, issues, etc. Right. Well, this is a way to do it. There may be other ways. There probably are. There could well be better ways. But this is a way that would work. Right. And, and, you know, as Horace said, you know, he who started is half finished. So you've got to start. Stop complaining and start. Do something, you know. So I'm not selling hope. I'm not even selling a product, you know. Wikis are, you know, basically free. And then also, if people want to do a distributed IPFS thing, right, that I've said in that email how that can be done, right, there are way better people um, with technical internet skills than me in local communities. Um, you know, get them involved. You know, that's how open source software works. I mean, that's my my software background is is open source stuff to do with sound modeling and stuff like that. But you know, um, yeah, I mean, um, it's it's an idea shared, and when you share an idea, it's not divided into half you know um so the other thing I, uh, is um yes there is something that we can do and it's you use the web as a tool but you actually make the organization off web you make the organization in real life with real people and put the 
put, put, put the internet back to work as a tool which we use for our benefit rather being the other way around. It's a tool used by the establishment for their benefit against our interests. That's what the internet is now. There's no sugar coating it. Mm. So, OK, well, I think this is all good news. Well, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just just, you know, a couple of guys having a chin wag on the internet I mean, if i just go through and just sort of ju just summarize where we're up to um gray space as david that that's the kind of the ideas an idea put out there it, it, you know if you share an idea it's not hard that this is his famous interview with jeremy paxman um uh so then this this is a sorry sorry, sorry who's interview who's interview with paxman david bell oh, right, 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 right yeah 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 so do not look away now uh, is a, 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 a blog with this cartoon again, um, which is uh, I, I, is one I posted on LinkedIn, you know, just basically saying, look, you know, um, we might all be sort of besuited corporate chaps and chapesses over here, uh, but let's stop pretending that, that you know, that, that we've actually got an A plus on our on our scorecard. We haven't. Uh, but it's it's being made harder and harder to get an A plus for prosperity in the current economy. I mean that's a basic point to other businessmen. Um, so yeah, so then here's wiki tactical voting the main page, and then you scroll down and and, and there's a choose your, your your constituency, and all of the constituencies that are, are are listed, and the ones that have got these blue links are kind of filled in with some stuff. But anyone can go in and edit those and start using that as a, you know, as a kernel around which to start organising at a local level, um, you know, to try and um, have an input at, you know, early stages of, right, when, when, when the election comes, we're going to run with this person because this person's got our interests at heart and we're going to keep an eye on them when they're up there so that they don't go native in Westminster. Uh so this is my evolution pun. So there's the George Carling thing and this evolution to a barcode. And then here's my evolution of the pen is mightier than the sword or the pencils mightier than the gun silhouette. Uh, and, you know, my impl Im implying here with the dongle that a dongle is is the digital equivalent of pen and paper. Right. It's. You, you are in control of what's on your own dongle. <laughs> so, so, so what um, is the point? So, so what you mean is that if it's not on a dongle, it can be interfered with. Well, the, the point about dongles are that what they actually are is they're, they're hash keys. Now, a hash key is an encryption technique. Yeah, but Roger, okay. Roger, Roger, uh, please, uh, don't, uh, please don't give me the technical stuff. Just tell me what does it mean? Don't, I don't what, want to know why. What, what it means is... You're saying that, they're important. Can you tell me in a sentence why are they important? What do they stop happening? What they represent is, is it is data which is not connected to the internet and therefore not subject to being looked at through the internet. OK, and because you encrypt it, when you plug it into the internet, it still remains... Um, It still remains private unless you want it to. So this is um, so so end to end encryption represented by a dongle. And the dongle actually has a bunch of stuff on there, which is to do with in this case, I'm saying to do with, say, wiki ballot and organizing your own primaries. Right. So that's the, at its simplest level. Right. Doing a website. Right. Having it on Cloudflare and trying to get people to look at it through Google, you are wasting your time, right? You, Wikiballot or Wiki Tactical Voting has existed on the internet for five years or whatever. As soon as it got to a thousand registered users, right, the whole thing dried up. Sure, you can find it. Sure, you can still see it. It's it's not censored in the sense that it's there, but you have to specifically go and look for it. But, you know, this video 
if I put this video of you and me, it will probably get 70 views on BitChute. Um, on, it might get 60 or 70 on Financial Eyes. On my YouTube channel, it would probably get 12. Because um, uh, basically, um, I mean, basically two blokes talking on the internet is pretty boring, I suppose. But at oh the my other level, God, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> point is we're, to, we're from the point of view of how effective it is well we can be effective by going away adopting our own constituencies and trying to get people to actively get involved in screening candidates and doing a primary and talking about local issues and 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 and, and, and uh, um, enough people being um interested in the results and that will get that does then get the attention of even the party party political representatives because they know they can't gaslight flim flam flannel uh their 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 constituents their electors um so then I've, I've made this mind map again. I, I this this mind map has a ton of information. I, I've been working on this mind map probably about for two two and a half years now, and that's the four pamphleteers one. So there's you, London London conversation. There's David Gollum. Uh, there's the slog. There's 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 uh, John Ward, um, and then it you know it does it, it. There's a whole bunch of blogs, including Ian Davis's blog. Um, there's the Tim Geelan film, Monopoly. There's an about, the guy that made that popular film called Monopoly, which came out about two years ago now. It's a guy called Tim Geelan. Um, so anyway, I, you know, there are people I don't agree with on here, like Dr. Tim Morgan. Um, I, I disagree with his analysis of surplus energy in the economy. It is a thing, but I just think he's got the wrong take on it. But he's there, you know. I Obviously, I... I I, I don't think that he's correct in his last step with 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 this, but that you know there is common ground between us. There are certain things that you know, we both agree that energy is very important when it comes to prosperity. Um, you know, so Gail Trevberg, I don't agree with Gail Trevberg. She's a key promoter of the peak oil theory, but she's there. You know, this is this is what free speech looks like. This this is what really trying to get the to at an issue to get at the truth you have to listen and 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 you know it, you know so but anyway so that that's just one screen that comes up on the going direct paradigm uh, mind map which is a useful tool um and then this is just a promotional thing that this was made for the city of london to promote i was trying to raise private equity for for, for our house building company um but this th this here it, it, it's it, it's a booklet dongle effectively what that is it's loaded with video and a presentation um and uh it exists outside of the internet you mail it to someone so the the a thumb drive obviously is cheaper than one of these things i think these are about 10 quid each whereas a, a preloaded thumb drive um you know i I guess you know you'd be able to find them for three quid. I mean, I it, it, you know it's not an ex. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's it, 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 the the supply chain is such like on demand printing of posters and stuff like that. I mean, it's uh, it, yeah, those are things that the internet is good at. <coughs> um, so a thumb drive achieves the same thing. That's the point about here this this LED USB booklet and and a thumb drive, and then this lists and a few of the operating systems you can get I, I use ubuntu on my laptop or on my big computer at home this I, i'm on a windows machine here this is this is a a, a a dell windows 10 system here that i'm using um preloader so that explains about so that hold then. on hold on hold on so you're saying that the thumb drive itself like the usb thumb drive itself mm -hmm. that has its own operating system yeah and, and some of them are very, they, they load fairly quickly um, and you can go on the Internet with them and all the rest of it. But you, you boot your computer off the thumb drive and the thumb drive 
uh, becomes what's in your hard disk that makes your computer work. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you saying that your computer's operating system becomes the operating system in the thumb drive? Yes. It's it's a, it's a, it's a bit like a virtual machine. Virtual machines actually exist on the internet, but possible? it's a virtual ma machine on the thumb drive. Has that always been possible? Oh, I've been doing it for years. So what happens to your computer's operating system? It's still there. It's just oh, no, no it's, it, it's still there. But what what the, the thumb drive, when you boot off the thumb drive, it uses a, a partitioned off bit of your hard drive and, and makes it temporarily used. And, and it uses all the libraries to use all of the gubbins, all of the electronics in your computer that that all. So w w when you load your computer, all of that stuff is loaded in off your hard drive. Right. OK, so um, but instead of loading that section of your hard drive, computers come usually delivered with software already on them. Right. Uh, you point it at just that section of code for um, booting the machine up and it's called booting you, like you can boot off an external hard drive so you can still you use can boot off a, a thumb drive so you can still use all the hardware in your computer but yeah, your computer works exactly the same it can be a little bit slower it depends how good your computer is i started messing about with this on very cheap notebooks because i i mean i start back in 2011 uh, 2010 2011 2012 that that's when I got into all of this open source Linux stuff. Um, I have a separate question that I want to ask you, but I'm going to ask you that um, when this recording is over, because uh -huh. it's probably going to be one layer too boring for whoever happens to have got this far in this. Yeah. OK, Look, let's just go down the rest. Of it. So this is it's all explained. Uh, and these explanations, I put questions I, I searched what I wanted um, to search and then Monica, which is chat GPT, gave me its summary. So these aren't even my words. This is done by machine learning uh, language models. Right. But if you ask the right questions, you can get reasonable answers. Uh, this link here to this blog, which is was done in March 2019, is a very talented computer programmer that was using a thing called Hugo and IPFS. Um, and uh, I did a blog the other day. He, he decided he didn't think free speech to the extent that IPF will allow is a good idea, right? Well, that's that's he, he's an Italian programmer. Uh, you know, that's his opinion. I don't happen to agree with him, uh, but that, that shows the architecture of that. Look, here's the maybe we shouldn't want a fully decentralized web. There's a link to that. I mean, have a read. Maybe people will agree with him. But I, I, I don't What's think his name again? agree with with actually using this as a way of getting people to vote. And make What's his name again? Oh, God. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't Stefano matter. Stefano something. Okay. I, I, um, anyway, so just moving on with that, uh, uh, you know, uh, and then it finishes off with this George Lovelace. Uh, George Lovelace was one of the uh, Toll Puddle Martyrs. And this is, um, you know, a little English folk tune type thing. So, you know, things like the Penrith Outprising, things like the Toll Puddle Martyrs, things like the, um, you know, the sedition uh, uh, trials for uh, uh, pamphleteering of Thomas Hardy, all of that sort of stuff. This is all part of that same tradition of... Um, radicalizing democratic processes actually making uh, making your voice heard effectively rather than you know sending up sock puppets as it were you know we've got a house of commons which has a very high ratio of sock puppets to genuinely uh constituent uh focused people i'm not saying they don't exist they do and of course there are plenty of well-meaning MPs, but they're cancelled out too. This this is actually to push them forward and make their voice more powerful. You know, you know what? Things. You know mm -hmm. what? Yeah. Um, at the moment, with the Israel stuff going on, it's obviously, obviously 
not everybody sees it in the same way. Uh -huh. But um, the basically because of the way in which the large platforms work, by which I mean the ones that I'm more likely to look at. So, for example, the Times and the BBC, um, and possibly the Guardian. Because of the way they all work and everything like that, ITV as well, um, Sky, the way information is presented at the moment is a little bit topsy-turvy. I think decisions get made about who goes on to these shows and you watch it and you listen to it and you sort of think, hmm, that is a particular way of looking at the world that they're constantly giving us. Mm. And if you see things in not exactly the same way as the people that they're putting on the show, the show itself is screening you out of society. It's basically just saying, you don't agree with us, do you? So you don't matter. You yeah. have to get with the program. That is the feeling that I get. Yeah, um, we're, we're living in an age of thought crime and wrong think. You know, can, yeah. I give you, can I give you a small example? Um, there is a program on Radio 4, which is called The News Quiz. I don't know when that was last funny, but I don't believe it was recently. <laughs> I listened to the first few minutes of yesterday's news quiz. Mm -hmm. I missed, I, I was, it was on iPlayer or iSound, so I just skip a bit. I don't want to listen to the beginning. I just skip a bit yeah. so until I can hear what might be the first topic. The first topic is Rochdale. So there's a by-election happening in Rochdale soon. And I can hear the first guy speaking. It's Andy Zaltzman. He is the host. Um, for me, Andy Zaltzman is obviously Jewish. I think he's from Birmingham. And I just don't think he's very funny. That's not the point. His, the guy that he used to do a podcast with, uh, John Oliver, is absolutely huge in the US. Um, and, you know, pushing the expansionist U.S. Democrat worldview. I know the guy. Yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah. With vile videos and it's like they're explainers. But, you know, there's stuff that's not really included in the way he looks at it. Um, so, yeah. Then I'm listening. And another guy starts talking. And I thought, you know what? I recognize your voice. You sound in some ways a little bit like me you are from the same part of the world as i am and you do kind of sound a little bit like i do um you are jewish but i can't recognize who you are exactly you are a comedian aren't you and he's speaking and he said oh yeah when i get all of this anti-semitic stuff sent to me you know i read it and he does a kind of joke about it and i'm thinking who are you you know, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? What kind of comedian are you? And I went back to the beginning. I haven't listened to the introduction, but I realized who it was because I think I must have looked it up. Uh -huh. Roger, it was the Murdoch columnist and Tory Lord. News quiz. Tory Lord, Daddy Finkelstein. All right. <laughs> yeah, but he was on News Quiz. He's a Tory Lord. He was on News Quiz. There's something about the order of that that feels a bit topsy turvy. He's in the fucking government. I mean, he's not a governor. He's not a minister. Yeah, I, I, he's well, a Tory I mean, Lord. Boris has chaired. Um, no, no, no. Thing. You're talking about have I got news for you? Yeah. But that's before he was an MP or whatever. You know, not as a fucking. No, like he's got he's this guy's already got a column. Anyway, I'm just saying that when I heard that and I looked at that, I just thought, you know what? I'm not going to say anything about this right now. But that is real rigging. Of the, you know, when you said thought control. Yeah. It was it was just too much for me. I just thought, oh, my God, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know when they record that, whether they record it on Thursday and put it out on Friday or if they do it live. But um, I'm guessing to you. That is no big deal. 
I, I, I think I, 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 I mean, I don't pay much attention to any media around you, and I, 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 I think it's so degraded now. It's the same with the internet. I don't pay much attention to the internet, really. Like, but do you think that's? Do you think that is do... ethical behaviour from the BBC? <clears throat> um. Well, well, are you gonna are you gonna come out with some sort of a fudge response, Roger? Well, I. I <laughs> Whether it's ethical or not, I don't know. I don't expect ethical behaviour from the BBC. I mean, that all finished years ago. I, you know, I mean, I, I um, they they pretend to be holier than thou, and I guess they always have. And I, you know, they, I I think they probably there must be a period at some point in the past when they actually were slightly nearer the target than they seem to be now. But I'm not surprised. You know, I mean, it's um, it's kind of old news, isn't it? Do you know? What, you mean you mean that the BBC is Ben? Well, it is what it is, and and the internet is what it is too. Johnny Oliver is who he is, and on whatever platform. But I've seen his show in in the you know on the state in the states or whatever. But um, the the point is right. None of this should surprise anybody. Um, the question is, what you're going to do? What we're going to do about it? You know, Indian Indiana. Um, the, the lyrics, I will find it and I'll put it at the bottom of that post I was just scrolling through and, you know, stick it in the description or whatever. But it's, um, you know, I, I, I mean, I would play out with that tune. So I'll put it on and just imagine that it came on sort of beautifully sort of faded in and all the rest of it. And you and I sort of walk off down to the green room with a smug look on our face. Um, and, and that's and, it, yeah. And, and We've lied to have the public. Have a few glasses of BBC wine at life's <laughs> air's expense. The bastards. <laughs> well, Roger, should we sign off and then I'll call you yeah. back to ask you about a slightly yeah. more obscure um, yeah. question? No problem. Cheers, Ranjan. Take care. Bye. Nice